Good morning. We are going to review some of the things that we've already learned and make sure that we understand the essential question and all those sorts of things dealing with two-step equations. So the question is, do you understand how is a solving a two-step equation similar to solving a one-step equation? And in my opinion, no matter how many steps the equation has, you can use the inverse relationship and the properties. to isolate the variable and solve. Now, you can probably tell that I am trying to use the correct wordage that would look better for academic vocabulary, um, but it's the same thing. No matter how many steps in an equation, you can use inverse operations and the properties of equalities, which is the move, distribute, commute, associate, um, to solve by isolating the variable. So this one has a bar diagram below to represent this. I struggle with bar diagrams, so I'm not gonna teach it, but you are more than welcome to go to YouTube and see if that's a strategy that works for you. Um, I know that I just put an X and I probably should have. I am going to ignore this I'm sorry, and I'm going to solve it using the inverse properties that I know, okay? This is two steps, so since it's a two-step problem, I'm going to look at my properties, and I'm going to work backwards. So the first thing that I'm going to do is move the subtraction. So that subtraction right there that's connected to that variable, I'm going to add three to both sides, okay? That means that this is, it's zero. So 4x then equals 13 plus 3, which is 16. Continued inverse operation, I can move this 4 with the inverse operation of dividing by 4, instead of multiplying by 4, and it will solve to be x equals 4. Number 3 is trying to finish the puzzle. In my opinion, that's the way that I put that. Since the solution is proposed as p equals 14, I'm just going to substitute it in and see if it works. So 6p minus 12 equals 72. 6 times 14 minus 12 equals 72. Now notice I'm going to put a little question mark because we don't know. 14 times 6 off to the side. 4 times 6 is 24. So that'll be 84 minus 12. Does it equal 72? Well, if I add 12 with my inverse properties to both sides, does 84 still equal 72 plus 12, 84? So yes, I can check by substituting 14 in 4p. Okay, if we look at number four, this is where we have to have a written problem, and they have our lovely, what are they called? Fractions. So I'm going to circle and highlight what's important. Clyde has two cups of flour, or Clyde is baking. And the recipe requires one and a third cups of flour. Clyde has two cups of flour, but he is doubling the recipe to make twice as much. How much more flour does Clyde need? So 
it wants us to use C to represent the amount of flour that Clyde needs, and we're writing an equation. So I need an equal. Okay, so one side is going to be, they want C to be the, represent the amount of flour that Clyde needs. C is two-thirds. How did we figure that out? We figured that out because we he has two cups. Well, let's just. Clyde has two cups, but he needs one and one-third cups. So he only has left over two. Oh, I skipped things around. Let's ignore that. Okay, sorry. And if I could edit this, I would. So ignore everything I just said. Okay. He wants to double. He needs to double the flour. Needs to be equal to what he has plus needs. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So the recipe calls for one and one third, but he's doubling it, so that's times two. What he has is two cups, but he needs what it's telling me, C, okay? If I need to explain that in person, push pause. Okay, now we need to solve the equation. Two plus C equals two times one and one third. Okay, so I'm gonna start with multiplying this side out. So this means I have, I've gotta change it. Two times, that's four, four thirds. So I end up with six over three. That doesn't seem right. No, eight over three, because two times four is eight. Make that prettier. Two times four is eight over one times three, which is three. So that equals two plus C. Okay, I'm going to change that eight thirds into two and one third. Two and two thirds. Okay. So then I will move by using my inverse operation of this two. So I'm subtracting two from both sides. And I'm left with C equals two and two thirds minus two means two thirds. Clyde is short two thirds cup flour. Okay. Okay, number five, four times a number N. So four times a number N added to three is 47. Now this cracks me up because when you have a situation like this one, I literally just wrote the words over top of the problem and it worked. Doesn't always work that way, but I can rewrite that as four times N plus three equals 47. And then they want us to solve it. That's what this means right here. So four N plus three equals 47. I'm going to move this three by using the in inverse property of addition and subtract three. Left with four N equals 47 minus three, which is 44. Using the inverse property of multiplication, I am doing divided by four, N equals 11. So there are the do you understand, do you know hows for um, solving, I'm trying to think of what it's called, I apologize, solving two steps of equations.